Hello, my name is Miss McVitie and I'm going to talk you through sentence structure questions to help with the higher RUEE paper. Learning intentions. We will learn how to answer sentence structure questions in the most effective manner. We will also learn how to achieve full marks in the sentence structure questions. It's important that we understand what we're being asked. And in this type of question, you're being asked to look at the punctuation or the technique the writer has used and how this enhances the point that they're making. On the right hand side, you can see a variety of different techniques that you should look out for. Our template for this type of question, first of all, identify the technique. So by that, I mean, don't just write down sentence structure, be specific. Is it parenthesis? Is it repetition? Is it a list? Be specific. Tell your marker. Then quote from the passage and clarify the writer's point. So how have they used this particular type of sentence structure to clarify their point? Okay, here's our example. Context. Comedian Romesh Ranganathan discusses his thoughts on his new sugarless diet. I started my day with water, chopped banana and porridge with no sugar. I usually add a half litre of agave. Absolutely disgusting. For a mid-morning snack, I had a sliced apple with some chilli powder. Sounds crazy, but it's incredible. Before a lunch of fairly plain vegetables. By late afternoon, I was absolutely battered. My head was thumping and I felt completely exhausted. So our question here is, show how the writer's use of sentence structure clarifies the points he makes. And our first tip is to look carefully at the punctuation used by the writer. So let's have a wee look now at the answer. Now, if you do want to try this one at home, first of all, pause the video at this point and give yourself around three minutes to answer this question. I would say around a minute and a half per mark give yourself, so three minutes for this question. So here's our model answer. Parenthesis. I usually add a half litre of agave. The extra information gives us a humorous insight into his old syrup consumption for breakfast compared to his new healthy lifestyle, which suggests that the he has totally changed his diet. Then we have another example of parenthesis. Sounds crazy, but it's incredible. The extra information justifies his unusual snack of choice, making it sound more appealing. Now, just to clarify, we've actually looked at parenthesis twice here, and that's absolutely fine because there are two individual examples of parenthesis. Similarly, if you had two different lists, you could write about both of them because remember, they are both doing different things. So there's no reason why you can't write the same technique twice if it's in there twice. Okay, so you can see I'm using the formula as well. So hopefully that's a wee bit clearer for you. Okay, now it's time for you to do some tasks. On the following slides, you will see different sentence structure practice questions. Now you should take about a minute and a half per mark to work on these. So for example, if the question is worth two marks, give yourself about three minutes to do it. Question one, context. Hannah Jane Parkinson discusses her love for luxury hotels and how often she stays in them. My affection for the soul resetting balm of a single night hotel stay has long outlasted that relationship. To be clear, I'm talking about expensive hotels, ones that would be unaffordable for more than a night. I have stayed in most of London's ultra luxurious hotels this week sampling them as if I'm at a wine tasting. And the question is, show how the writer uses sentence structure to show the type of hotels she stayed in and how many she's been in. Now this is worth two marks and you can see that my first tip is to look at how many marks are available and this will make clear how many separate points you need to make. Now, if you want to attempt this question, I would pause the video 
and give yourself around three minutes to do this. So you could either time yourself with your phone or your laptop or your computer or get a parent to time you. Answer to question one then. First of all, we notice the dash. One's unaffordable for more than a night. The dash expands the writer's idea that hotels are so luxurious that normal people can't afford to stay there for very long at all. And the first thing to point out to you is that I've used ellipsis because that's quite a long quote and it's actually not all necessary for me to make my point. So it's absolutely fine for you to do that. Just make sure that the quote that you do include includes the technique that you've chosen and it also is relevant to the question. That would get you one mark. The next one that we've picked is the semicolon, sampling them as if wine tasting. The semicolon emphasises the writer's idea that she's been to many different hotels, trying them all out. So that would get your second mark. So what did you get for this question? If you got full marks, that's fantastic. Well done. If not, can you see where the marks come from? Make a note of anything that you've learned from this answer. Question two, context. Hannah Jane Parkinson discusses what appeals to her about luxury hotels. Do I want classical music lightly playing across a vintage style radio every time I cross the threshold to my room? Yes, it's no more than I deserve. Do I want a dressing gown arranged to look as though it were worn by a hanger as opposed to just, well, hanging on it? Yes. Am I excited to lounge around in a bar with a fantastic view, reading a book and knowing that when I'm done, I have no journey home? You bet. And the question is, analyse how the writer uses sentence structure to show Parkinson's love for hotels. Now at this point, you should be acknowledging that it's a four mark question, so you're going to have to spend a little bit longer on this. I think maybe six to seven minutes on a question like this. So pause your video just now and remember to reread the passage. Let's have a look at the answer then. Our first mark comes from the repetition of sentence openings, do I want? The repetition highlights the different and varied aspects that Parkinson enjoys about luxury hotels. Then we have acknowledging the rhetorical question, Am I excited? No journey home? The rhetorical question highlights Parkinson's excitement at being able to experience the variety of amenities within a hotel and can very quickly go to bed. Our next mark comes from the short sentence, yes. The abruptness of Parkinson's answer shows that she is absolute in her pleasure over hotel dressing gowns. And finally, we have another short sentence, but remember, you can write about the same technique twice if it's there. You bet. Again, the use of the short sentence shows Parkinson's elation at being able to go out for a drink and then be home within minutes. So hopefully you got four marks for this question. If you didn't get full marks, can you see where the marks come from? Make a note of anything that you've learned from this answer. Hopefully we're starting to find our rhythm with these question types now. Let's have a look at question three. Context. Hannah Jane Parkinson discusses making the most of her time while staying in luxury hotels. When one has only a short time, however, one learns to make the most of things. Obviously, this is widely said about life, but it also applies to five star hotel stays. Specifically, getting up at sunrise to watch colour paint the sky while doing gentle laps in the heated rooftop pool, followed by eggs done every single way, accompanied by an array of complimentary newspapers. And the question here is, analyse how the writer uses sentence structure to demonstrate her love for making the most of her short stays. Now this is a two marker, so it should take you around three minutes. Remember, set a timer and pause the video now to attempt this at home. Let's have a look at the answer for question three. The first thing that you could have written about was parenthesis. Obviously, 
also applies to five-star hotel stays. The additional information shows that Parkinson wants to make the most of every situation, including hotel stays. So that would get you the first mark. Then we have the colon to introduce a list. Getting up at sunrise, complimentary newspapers. The colon introduces the long list of amenities that she takes advantage of while staying somewhere for such a brief time. So what did you get for this question? If you got two out of two, that's fantastic. If not, the marks that you didn't get, can you see where they come from? Remember to make a note of anything you've learned from this answer. Question four, context. Hannah Jane Parkinson discusses making the most of her time while staying in luxury hotels. Naturally, this all has to come to an abrupt end. For Cinderella, that happened at midnight, and for me, it, it's usually 11 a.m. sharp. But it's money well, if infrequently, spent. I am excited for when the Rona times have receded to hear the clattering of a receptionist keyboard once more, as I am told to enjoy my stay. I always do. And our question here is, analyse how the writer uses sentence structure to discuss the end of her hotel stays. Now, obviously, you can see that it's a two mark question. So again, it should roughly take us about three minutes. Pause the video now to attempt this question at home. The answer to question four then. Sem semicolon. Naturally, this all comes to an abrupt end. For me, it's usually 11 a.m. sharp. The semicolon clarifies the writer's point that she has to leave and that she leaves it till as late as possible, because obviously she's having a great time. And that would get you the first mark. The second mark comes from identifying the short sentence. I always do. The brevity of this sentence clarifies just how much Parkinson enjoys her stay and that she is certain that she always has a good time. So what did you get for this question? If you got full marks, that's really super. Well done. If not, can you see where the marks have come from? Make a note of anything you've learned from this answer. Question five, context. The Guardian's Katie Hawthorne looks at the impact that coronavirus is having on the live music industry. The government's roadmap suggests that a return to live music is on the horizon, but thanks to a combination of a huge backlog of gigs, continuing global COVID infections and unclear conditions for reopening, musicians, bookers, promoters and club owners say it's far from certain. And our, high, and our question here, is to analyse how the writer's sentence structure helps to highlight the impact of COVID-19 on live music. Now, this is a two mark question and a little tip, I know you can't highlight the video, but highlight the punctuation that stands out to you. So as I said, this is a two mark question. So pause your video now and time yourself for around three minutes to see how you get on with this question. Then we'll go over the answer together. Answer to question five then. We have a list. So huge backlogs through to unclear conditions for reopening. And the list shows the amount of uncertainty and problems encountered by those who work in live music. So that would get you the first mark. Then we've got a second list of musicians and club owners. And the list highlights the variety of different people who have been affected in the music industry. So what did you get for this particular question? Have you got full marks? Brilliant. If not, can you see where the marks come from? Make a note of anything you've learned from this answer before we move on. You're doing really, really well, folks. Just one more question to go. Question six, context. Comedians Rob Beckett and Josh Widdicombe talk about their parenting podcast. Beckett has two young children with his wife, Louise Watts, while Widdicombe and his wife, Rose Hansen, have one, with another on the way. Each week, the pair interview a celebrity. Past guests have included Michael Sheen, Philippa Perry and Paddy McGuinness. 
while sharing stories about their upended domestic lives. It's fast, fun and at times genuinely touching. Here they share their thoughts on the pandemic pastime. And our question is, analyse how the writer's sentence structure creates a picture of what the podcast is like. And this is worth two marks. So we know what to do by now. Pause the video for around three minutes and do make sure that you time yourself because it gives us an indication of how you're getting on with these types of questions and if you were need to work on quick a timing. Our answer then. First of all, we have parenthesis. Past guests have included Paddy McGuinness. The parenthesis tells us that the podcast includes a variety of different well-known celebrities as guests. And that would get you one mark. Then we've got a list. It is fast, fun and genuinely touching. So this list tells us how diverse it is and how it can be moving but also entertaining. Did you get two marks for this? If so, well done. If you didn't, can you see where the marks come from? Make a note of anything that you've learned from this particular answer. Our plenary then. I can now structure my answers in an effective way, which helps me to achieve maximum results. I can highlight punctuation, which helps to identify the techniques that I need to analyse. I can use bullet points, which help to keep track of how many points I have made. I can also keep my answers concise and make my point as quickly as I can. Well done. You have now completed the different sentence structure questions. You now understand the best way to structure your answers and how to gain full marks. Next steps, revise the different types of punctuation and what they all do. This will help you to be able to explain their use in your answer. Thank you, Miss McVitie.